How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about President Donald Trump visiting an infamous New York City bodega, which is a corner store, convenience store, right after his second day of being in court for the whole Stormy Daniels hush money criminal case. Now, there's a lot I want to get into, but first things first, shout out to everybody who was out there showing the president nothing but love as he normally gets all over the country. Shout out to the kids and the adults. Shout out to Lou Valentino. I saw you in the clip, boss. A lot of people out there supporting Trump in New York City. The media might want to tell you that he was getting booed and he's not welcome in New York City where there's a lot of Democrats and a lot of so-called minorities. They may tell you that he's not welcome, but judging by that clip and what we're going to see in a minute, I can't tell. If that's the case, then I can't tell. So let's get into a few clips here. First, we're going to see Trump outside of the courtroom talking about going to the bodega. And then we're going to get into why this particular bodega was important to visit. Because it wasn't just any bodega. This was a place where something pretty impactful and unfortunate happened. So let's check it out here. This is Trump after second day. Say, hey, we're going to the bodega. Check it out. Going to a bodega. You know about that, right? So we're going to the bodega. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, in case you guys don't remember, this is the reason why he went to the bodega. So it says breaking President Trump to visit Harlem bodega where an employee acted in self-defense resulting in the death of two of a thug two years ago. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg charged a man with the murder, but later dropped the charges due to community outrage. Now, I'm not going to play this video here, but you guys may remember the, the store clerk a man in a, a green and blue polo shirt. That's Jose Alba. He is minding his business, working, and this guy right here should not be back there. What happened was some woman came up to the front and was trying to buy some things, but her car wasn't working. Maybe she's trying to blame the store clerk for the car not working. I don't really know. But, of course, she calls up her pookie. He comes to the store and tries to confront the manager, the clerk, and he gets deleted. Jose Poppy was holding a blade and deleted the guy in self-defense because the guy was attacking him. Now, the guy, Jose Alba, the store clerk, got locked up for this, and it was a whole big thing to try and get him out. Now, Jose Alba has gone back to DR. Now, I don't blame him at all because it's like, if you go through something like that in New York City and you are kind of fearing what's going to happen as far as the justice system. You know what? I'm, I'm not even, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I'm leaving New York City because I cannot do with the crime and the violence and also my life being in the balance as a result. So yeah, that was that. Now let's look at some of the love that Trump got. Then we're going to get to the official news clip and see uh, some reaction from some of the people, the jurors and everything else. So let's check this out here. People love him. USA! 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 Nothing but love. Nothing but love for Trump. Everybody loves Trump and people can't really deny it. You know, well, I'm not going to say everybody. Some people don't love Trump. Some people hate Trump. But out here, New York City, is nothing but love. I don't hear any booing. I don't see any protests. I don't see anything like that. Maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe I have selective vision. But you guys, I'll link to the videos in the box so you can see it for yourself. So don't take my word for it. Believe your eyes, not my eyes. Now let's check this out. Here's a news clip. We're going to see a little bit more. And we're going to hear from some of the jurors. Because, again, the case is already it's, it's starting now. We're on, I think, day three because it's Wednesday. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. Check it out. Let's gather in Upper Manhattan as former President Trump visits a bodega at the center of a controversial case. Good evening, everybody. I am Doug Williams. After attending court for day two of his ongoing criminal trial, former President Trump met with bodega owners in Hamilton Heights. Police put up barricades as dozens of people gathered to catch a glimpse of Trump. CBS 2's Ali Bauman live outside the bodega witnessed all the mayhem of the former president's visit firsthand. Ali. 
Old Doug Donald Trump was invited here today by the Bodega Association to discuss crime that they say is putting bodega workers at risk. And people not only lined the streets, but they were also hanging out of windows, standing on scaffolding to get a glimpse of all the action. Now, remember, the Bodega Association, they were the ones who ultimately were able to get Jose Alba out of Rikers Island where he should never have been at all. He should not have been there. This was a clear cut case of self-defense, but New York city is a weird place. Okay. You get locked up for defending yourself, but then when you are the actual victimizer, you get no bail. You can stomp police officers out in times square on camera and get released. No bail. You defend yourself from someone attacking you in the store on camera and you get locked up. I mean, make it make sense. Donald Trump was greeted by dozens of supporters and opponents as he met with bodega owners at 139th Street after leaving criminal court this afternoon. The former president spoke with staff inside for about 10 minutes before coming out, waving to the crowd, shaking hands, and talking to the press for another 15 minutes or so. This location is significant. It's where two years ago, the bodega clerk Jose Alba was charged with murdering a man behind the counter. In an exclusive interview at the time, Alba told us that he was acting in self-defense. And after public outcry, District Attorney Alvin Bragg dropped the charges against him. Outside the bodega today, Trump blamed the DA for, as he put it, going after Trump instead of the real criminals. You know where the crime is in the bodegas? Every week they're being robbed two, three times. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you know what? The police can do it. They can stop it. But they have to be allowed to do their job. That's right. The police have to be allowed to do their job. And when these guys get arrested, when these guys get locked up, how about let's keep them there? How about let's not have zero bill? When guys get caught red-handed doing something crazy, violent crime, robbery, whatever, when they get caught red-handed, how about keeping them in jail for a while or at least have some kind of bill rather than zero bill? Because what happens, these guys have a very high recidivism rate. What's the incentive to not commit crime again when there's really no punishment in their eyes? Okay, I got to go to court. Well, psh, I ain't going to do that. I'll just go somewhere else. I'll flee New York City or I'll just stay at the house. Come get me. And Jose Alba was not actually here himself. He no longer works at this bodega and we're told he's in his native Dominican Republic. Now, in a statement, a spokesperson for the DA said in part, DA Bragg's top priority remains combating violent crime and the office has worked hand in hand with the NYPD to drive down overall crime in Manhattan. We're live in Hamilton Heights tonight. Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. All right, Ali, thanks so much. And as for Trump's criminal trial, seven people have now been selected as jurors. The former president is facing 30 34 felony charges accused of falsifying business records to cover up so-called hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Prospective jurors who were dismissed talked about what it was like inside that courtroom. So that's what the case is about. It's about the way that he allegedly paid the money. It's the, it's the method in which the money was doled out. It's not even that he paid it. It's the way that he did it. And it's not even about Stormy Daniels and anything about her personally, because I think she lost a case against him and has got to pay him one hundred and thirty hundred and four thousand dollars. So really, it's just some some rigmarole, some BS that the uh, Manhattan DA's office is cooked up as part of a witch hunt against Trump. It's as simple as that. But I digress. You've seen him on, on TV and as this this blown up public figure for so long and you walk by and it's it's like it's just another guy sitting in the courtroom. I think it's a heavy burden to bear and I didn't want to bear that burden. The names of prospective jurors are only revealed to attorneys on both sides. And on our website, you can find more information, including the full questionnaire being filled out by prospective jurors. So that's pretty much what's going on. And this is going to be like the OJ trial. They're going to cover this 24 seven nonstop. And you know, the reason why they're going to cover it is not because they want transparency and they care about democracy. What they care about is dollars and cents and eyeballs. They know this is going to be a record breaking event for their TV stations. So the ad revenue is going to be through the roof. All right. That's why they're going to show it, but that's what's happening. Shout out to Trump going to the bodega. Shout out to everybody out there supporting the president. You got little kids, adults, everybody out there. Nothing but love. Every time I see Trump, it's it's never like this contentious thing. The American people got a lot of love for Trump. 
especially in my opinion, as I close, especially after seeing what Joe Biden has not done over the past almost four years. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on Trump visiting the bodega? Was it a good thing, bad thing? Somewhere in between? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. How about this whole Stormy Daniels hush money trial? It's not even really about Stormy Daniels. It's about, quote unquote, falsifying business records. Just some gobbledygook they done cooked up to try and hem the former president up. So he's not able to be on the campaign trail. So he can't do things like go to his son Barron's graduation. It's it's just a bunch of malarkey, as Joe Biden would say. It's BS. It's nonsense. It's a witch hunt. But if you think differently or agree, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.